Berlin always was kind of an island in Germany because it's small, it's closed in, so it was always basically the people not fitting in in the rest of Germany going there. It was great. It was much more wilder. The old punk rock scene and then it goes to rock and roll and I'm sure to know about Nick Cave and all the guys was living here at this time and yeah. It was a special place because um, it had a border, it was like an island. Those kind of small islands, I think, built easily subculture, underground, so it was always connected with artists, more guitar stuff back in the days, great clubs like the sound and, and as we know David Bowie, Depeche Mode came here to live and used to record here and were staying for a while and it was just crazy and great place. It was um, totally different to, 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 to now because Kreuzberg where I grew up was like a district who, who stopped at the wall. Here in this area all the artists and all the creative people meet and all the um, left scene meets here, yeah? In 89 it was the first time when I went to Berlin as a, as a tourist. I still had to pay money to get into East Germany. It was the first time I, I went to Berlin and I experienced, I went out in Berlin, see clubs, see discotheques and um, where I felt in love with the city. And I knew that I want to come back. And it was in 89, it was two weeks before the wall came down. And I remember one Sunday morning, I mean, in the Black Forest, in the area around Stuttgart at four or five o'clock, there was nothing anymore. The discotheques were empty and it was time to go home. And uh, we went clubbing in, Ber in Berlin and at six o'clock in the morning, there was a club called Jungle next to Kurfürstendamm in a side street and we went there, knocked on the door and then the bouncer opened the door and people were falling down, uh, falling out of the club because it was so packed. So we couldn't get in, it was 6.30 in the morning, we couldn't get in in the club and I just thought like, wow, I want to, I want to live here, that's fantastic. When you are a child, it's, it's really nice actually to, to grow up in the East where everyone is equal. Everything was very well organized by, by the government, so my childhood was great. For me it was not that nice because you couldn't leave the country, you couldn't travel as you wanted. It was difficult to go to another uh, country, I never could go to Spain or Italy or whatever. As a kid it wasn't too difficult because, you know, I had a really good childhood, I think. and. Um, I didn't have that much thoughts in my mind about the system and stuff, so for me it was okay. I did cross the border a few times. What you usually did is you had to apply for a visum for one day, and then you got the visum and then you were able to go. They just made sure that we are really leaving. <laughs> <laughs> and I went one day with a band. Of course, that was not allowed that they play over, so it was a secret gig, and what happened usually is that they were done in church churches because then that was the places where they couldn't you know couldn't grab that. Be there an official concert of a West Berlin band was not possible, and so we crossed the border in different different um, frontiers because we had Czech Pontali and other places you can go over into East Berlin, and then we met again at this place, and then there was this Eastern ska band, and they played in the Western 60s band I was with, and it was really fun, it was great, and, and then I, I saw and understood that there were a lot of similar people there, because there was a scene, it was of course not that obvious, and they had to hide, and punk rock was also not, to be a punk rocker in Berlin was, East Berlin was not really easy, because they got really in trouble because of the hair, and, and, and the political thoughts, but there were people and, and, and they, they fought for, for what they thought. When the wall comes down, everybody was happy and yeah, the wall comes down, the wall comes down and it was like a great emotion who's going out there and then, and, and, then the people picked me up on the wall and I was standing at a little boy standing on the wall like, yeah, uh, freedom and for all people and something like that. Yeah, so it was, a, it was a great feeling. Yeah, a lot of my friends 
directly drive to Berlin and uh, made a big party. For me, it was oh, I was like 15 years and I was like really shy. And I was like, wow, wow, what's happening now? And uh, all the, um, in the place where I lived in, 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 in Hanover, all the people from East Germany coming with their old cars. And uh, yeah, it was exciting. It was really exciting. I haven't that much memory of the day when it, fall, when it fell down. It, I, I um, worked that day, that day in, a, in a club. I made Which club? Cha-cha. Cha-cha, nee, echt? Yeah. That was before <laughs> techno, that was um, that was yeah, fun. 80s club. Great. I mean, and I came home and my parents, oh, something happened and you have, uh, I have to look at the, at the TV. And I was so tired and I didn't pay that much, that much attention. I went to, to the ball some days later and I was, wow. Amazing day, yeah. huh? Amazing. Fucking amazing yeah. day. And at this beginning, techno starts, huh? Yeah. And uh, when the wall came down, we had a lot of places in the east, of course, because there were a lot of empty houses and garages or whatever. I think there was a scene before, but it was easier than to, to do something, like to parties, because all of a sudden you had a lot of locations and um, people, it was easier for people to get connected. So I think it made it more easy for the electronic scene after that. Before the wall came down in East Berlin, everything was always like very small and in the darkness, like little parties and private houses and stuff. And of course, after the wall came down, everything was possible. And the electronic scene was built in the east part of Berlin because there was a lot of uh, uh, places where nobody is, you know. We were looking at the houses in Mitte and tried to find out where there's no light. You watch it for four days, then you break in the door and take a look. Is nobody at home? Okay. <laughs> and there was a, so many empty places you can't imagine. Well, I think it was pretty underground at that time and um, also still a lot of illegal parties like, you know, just go somewhere to a space, drop a sound system and just go for a party. There was a completely new city born in a way with all the possibilities, all the new venues, the old buildings that were possible to try and, uh, and um, experience new things, new music, new clubbing experiences. Well, people were coming, taking a look at, ah, okay, it's looking rotten, but it's still function in a way. So you could open up a club immediately. Most clubs in the 90s and also nowadays are next to where the wall was before. Um, because all the area on the east side, next to the wall, were like death land. Because uh, no one was allowed to live next to the wall. All the industrial buildings, they were all trashed, you know. There was no one using them because it was so close to the wall from the east side. So we had a lot of locations yeah. then to do parties and stuff. And no police, no law, you can do what you want, you know. No, no security, no water, no toilets, <laughs> only boxes and mixing. <laughs> yeah, they tried to get the chance um, to, to find places where they didn't have to pay rent, of course. So uh, nobody knows which, which building belongs to who. So most of the time it was, un um, in the beginning, was much, much unlegal parties. You just go inside in, 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 a, in a... In dirty, dirty, up fucking places, really. Amazing, yeah. trashy. People were open to everything and that time that was more or less by accident. The electronic scene started to grow. The Detroit people decided that they want to spread the Detroit sound into the world and not underground resistance and not be just in Detroit anymore and they were open up, opening up them to Europe and then they came over and then the whole thing started and there's the one thing I remember that was Jeff Mills playing the first time at Trezor with Mike Banks and, and, and he was playing and nobody was dancing. They were just standing there listening. He threw the records behind him and Mike Banks was putting them back into the DJ case. And that was exactly how it was. People were just blown away by what's going on here. And, and that, I, I call it, it was a soundtrack for, for the Berlin that in these days. And it was different music, different way of going out, different light situation with fog and, and strobe light and more individual things, not the laser, big discotheque uh, thing anymore. And that was exactly what, what people wanted.
That's so many years ago, huh? <laughs> and when I came to Berlin and I was at eWork the first time, I just thought like, I mean, that's absolutely different. That's completely different. The venues were different. The atmosphere, the, the whole clubbing experience was completely different. So my first favorite club was the Suicide. Love Parade. Love Parade. The Love Parade. Thank you, Dr. Motte. Yeah, it was so great and so crazy that I had to come every year after that. And Ewerk. We were the e Also Already the parking first. ravers. Yeah. Yeah. Just, they never come in, they, they love to hang out at the, at the front on the parking place and when we had music in the car, what they've been there like, yeah. <laughs> Bunker? Walfisch. Walfisch. The Walfisch. Then of course, Planet. Tresor, of course. Fischlabor before. Ständige Vertretung. It's called WMF. To WMF. Maria. It's called Maria am Ostbahnhof. Cookies. Mm -hmm. And Turbine Rosenheim was. Yeah, also, but it's funny because um, when I went the first time to the Trezor, it was the night I played there first, so i never been there before. So I had my first live like, like, uh, ever, and it was at Trezor, and it was also my first night at Trezor at all. Trezor Club and Trezor Records was the first club and label. Other clubs now were trying, that's fine also, to release stuff. Uh, other labels tried to do parties or clubs, but we were the first. In the early 90s, my favorite DJ was Mr. Jeff Mills, of course, because he's, he was the one I saw first really having the skills of being a really good DJ. And I'm a big fan of Jeff Mills still. One of my favorite DJ at that time was West Bam. West Bam at E-Work, really clubby and really um, with a disco touch. Uh, we always went to listening to West Bam, eh? Of course. Oh, West Bam. We, we can't forget him, we're in Berlin. Uh, yes, but I, I know West Bam when he was still called Westfalia Bambata and he was playing in the 80s. Yes, he's Shea Conrad at the West. I know him, he was DJ Max at um, uh, Metropol. I was a big fan of Electric Indigo. There was one DJ and he called Smitya Prince and Dixon. They were my heroes at this time. It was Mitya Prince and Dixon who were the first guys who started doing a proper deep house night in Berlin and in, in the WMF. In the middle of the 90s my favorite was uh, rock, disco, Jonsson and Woody. Yeah. The Eberg residents were my Klee. favorite. And Clay. <laughs> For me it was a DJ called DJ Disco. He, he was a resident at the Eberg. It was actually the best club in the 90s in, in Berlin. And there were a few residents like Woody and Klee. And you know, every year have his own DJ and uh, of course Sven Fee for sure. Even Paul van, Paul van Dyk in England, they say Paul van Dyk or something, I don't know. It was good. The DJ Sasha. Uh, Woody, of course. Katix and Robson. DJ Kid Paul. Of course, Sven Fee. I would say Tani and Sven Fee. That's the two most important DJs for me from the 90s. Sven Fee. Uh, Frank Lorber, something I, this sound where I lived this was the south of Germany. In the beginning it was totally different, you know. The people in the west of Germany, they listen all the Frankfurt sound and the people in the east, they listen the Berlin sound. It, now it's mixed something. Yeah, but the Berlin sound was really American sound at that time. So, two different sounds in one, in, 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 in the country, yeah. And 